Okay, hello. I made a mistake. I did a repair video for this Nikon. I didn't talk during the repair. And then while I was editing, I was like, oh, I'll do a voiceover for the repair. And I was like, eh, you know, I really just don't want to do that. I feel like I've got a lot of like long content. So I wanted like a nice little short video. So I kind of opted for that. And I apologize because I've like not had an FM on the channel before. So I kind of want to talk about it because of all of the Nikon cameras, this is probably my favorite for a number of reasons. But basically I got this in, I mean, for a screaming deal. I was pretty stoked about that. And it is going to be my friend's camera. I was fixing it up for him. What was happening was you could advance and then continue to advance. And so with Nikons, there's a very terrible system that they use. I personally hate it more than anything. It's just kind of the root cause of a lot of the issues with them, mechanically speaking at least. And that would be their advance mechanism here in the bottom. And they use pretty much an identical shutter to the Emi Super. It's the Copal shutter, vertical traveling, horizontal traveling. Yeah, anyway. The one thing I do like is that the battery compartment lid is separate from the bottom, so you can pull the bottom off and not have to worry about batteries flying everywhere. So that's nice. Good mark for Nikon. However, this system here is an atrocity to mankind, and I do not stand for it. Just kidding. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just like, what's going on? So let's talk about it real quick. Oh yeah, good stuff. So good gotta glue that back on now bear with me because I don't have the manual so this is just me speaking about things but fire it there so as you advance it notice that disc moves and it travels back like so and then that is the little pin that is moving like so which gets it to fire and then that causes a chain of reactions through the rest of the camera, mostly in here. So you can't really see it because the shutter release mechanism is like in there somewhere. The thing that I want you to pay attention to is this system right there. So notice how it falls into place, that catch. That catch was not working. So what that does is that locks the advance lever basically. So if I were to move it slightly, there's a little lip there on that arm and that will move, but that stays there and catches it and now it will not. So if you notice this brass piece here, folds into place, that puts pressure on this little arm and that applies pressure right there. So it's a lot of like very just tiny small actuations that just the smallest lack of lubrication in the right spot, the smallest lack of like, you know, if someone was to just not use this for a little bit, leave it unadvanced, it, it'll lose tension and then it just won't work. And of course it is very fixable, but I mean, <laughs> come on, <laughs> I can't be alone on this. Little stuff like that, margin for error is basically slim to none. No, no, thank you. But basically that is what I fixed on this camera. I also took the top off because sometimes if it's not here, which usually it is here, but there's usually other issues in the camera. Like, okay, <laughs> I'm a level with you. Sometimes, so my old boss, he was a big, big fan of Nikons. And I respect him for that because you know, in his mind, Nikon can do no wrong. In my mind, Pentax can do no wrong. Like I just, I love Pentax cameras. I love that system. I love the design, X, Y, Z. It's great. However, man enough to admit that Pentax has a few duds, okay? There's a few design choices that I'm not so sure about. Case in point being the uh, frame counter system. I don't know what the thought was there but it was not a good thought. Old boss man, love Nikons. He just like give me a box like full of them. Be like, 
easy fixes. Just you just have to you just he would do this. Just have to lube the bottom. Just just lubricate the bottom. I was like, I mean, yeah, that can fix some of them, but like if there's electrical issues, oil is not really going to solve that. It's not a five second repair, you know. Other things. So this FE actually is having a relatively similar issue to this, except the catch here is not the issue at all. There was a dent taken out in the top and something is not catching in the top so you can continue to advance it. And then it's very delicate and fragile and all the pieces are, instead of using one piece, they use like six. So it becomes incredibly frustrating to service these cameras. And I understand it because the idea is you would send it in to Nikon and they would fix it. However, I don't think Nikon's really gonna fix these anymore. <laughs> so it's been, it's been kind of a riddle and a puzzle to solve, but it's, it's enjoyable, so I'm not gonna be too mad about it. But the, the whole point being is that could be anything. That's typically what it is. I would start looking there. And what you want is you want this to be uh, parallel to the bottom lines of the camera. So for instance, if you see it like that, or if it's sitting like this or that, if it's like this, then you definitely have a problem because that means it's not going back into place. That being this little advance knob here. And there is no cover for them, at least that I'm aware of, because the idea was that you can just kind of slap a, uh, an auto winder on it, but yeah. Anywho, that is the Nikon FM repair. I hope that helps explain things. I apologize for just the quick little musical video. I thought that'd be kind of fun. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and maybe going forward, I will reserve that for projects I've already done. Like if it's, you know, another, I don't know, shutter box removal on an Emmy Super, I'll just throw some music on that and not talk over it because I've done that enough now. So we will see. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to comment down below if you have any questions. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Catch you on the next one.